Hi, everybody. Today, I am making a very cute and adorable teddy bear cake. I really love this cake because it's so different and unique. This cake was for a friend's daughter who loves teddy bears, and she did, in fact, love this cake, too. All right, let's get started. Before I can work with the cake, I first have to build the cake structure. Right here, I have a 15 inch MDF board with wooden feet that I glued on, and I've covered this board with white cake foil. You'll need just one hole drilled into the board, which I made a little bit off center. I also have a threaded rod and four corresponding washers and nuts. This board that I have right here is very important. It is an eight inch masonite board that I got on Amazon. I drilled a hole right in the center that is the same size as my threaded rod. And I also have an eight inch cardboard circle with a larger hole cut out in the center. And I'll show you why I did that here in just a minute. I have one final board, which is a six inch cardboard circle with a smaller hole that I cut right in the center. Okay, so let's go ahead and get my threaded rod secured into the board. I'm adding a nut and washer onto the threaded rod, and I'm pushing the rod into the hole in the board, and then I secure it with another washer and nut. It's really important here to get this as tight as you can by using pliers or wrenches. Just hold one end and twist with the other. Here I wanted to show you how I'm going to use these boards later on. So the masonite board will go about right here and my cake is going to sit right on top of that. And I cut the hole in my eight inch board so that it will fit around the washer just like this. All right, let's move on to the cake. For this one, I have baked two eight inch round cakes and two six inch round cakes. Each of the cakes will get leveled and torted just like I'm doing with this cake. These cakes are getting filled with my raspberry cake filling. I just made a video showing how I make this filling, so if you're interested in that, here is a link for you. The middle layer is my Swiss meringue buttercream, and then I add more cake and raspberry filling. Now that I have the cake filled with deliciousness, I am giving it a crumb coat, and then I pop it into the refrigerator to chill. And once it is cold, I begin the smoothing process. I'm adding more buttercream and then I smooth it out with an icing comb. And then I use my icing comb again to scrape across the top edge, pulling the buttercream in towards the center. And I do that all around that top edge just until I'm happy with it. And then I pop it back into the refrigerator to chill. My six inch cake is complete and I am repeating the same process for my eight inch cake, starting with my eight inch cake circle. Let's move on to the fondant. Fondant always sticks to my countertop, so I like to dust it with cornstarch, which I find to work better than powdered sugar. I'm using my Wilton rolling pin to roll out the fondant and I drape it over my rolling pin and then I unroll it onto my cake. To smooth out my fondant, I'm running my hands around that top edge and I'm opening up the pleats on the sides of the cake and smoothing it out the best that I can with the palm of my hand. Covering cakes and fondant takes a little bit of practice, but once you get the hang of it, it actually is pretty easy. Okay, once I'm all the way down to the bottom, I use my fondant smoother to get out any imperfections, and then I cut away the excess fondant. And I also cover my eight inch cake in fondant too. This time I'm using white fondant. All right, let's move back over to my cake structure. So here I am covering the threaded rod with more aluminum foil tape to make that food safe. And I want to be sure to cover the nut and washer too. I am making my teddy bear out of Rice Krispie Treats, but if you want to use cake for this part, you definitely can. 
I am molding the treats into the shape of the body. Be sure to spray your hands with cooking spray before you start working with the Rice Krispie treats or it will be a very sticky mess. I'm molding his head next and I decided to make his head a little bit tilted to the side. So I added more right underneath his head. Now that I'm happy with the shape of his head and body, I'm covering it completely in chocolate ganache. I'm smoothing it out a little bit, but I'm not too worried about getting this perfect. Next, I'm covering the teddy bear with a sheet of modeling chocolate, and then I'm cutting away the excess right around that edge. I got a new impression mat that I wanted to try out. It's a short haired mat made by Marvelous Molds and Elisa Strauss. Elisa Strauss is someone that really inspired me when I first started making cakes many, many years ago. So I'm really happy to support her. And also I am finishing off covering the teddy bear in modeling chocolate. And I'm using a sugar shaper modeling tool to blend the seams and push the chocolate underneath the teddy bear. I have also created some ears and I'm attaching those to his head and I'm using the back of a paintbrush to make indentations where his eyes will be. His arms and legs are also made out of modeling chocolate. For me, I wouldn't serve big pieces of modeling chocolate to people. I always take off the big pieces of fondant or chocolate before I cut the cake because I know that people don't like getting big chunks of modeling chocolate. All right, for the back leg that looks like it's holding up the cake, I have modeled a leg shape out of modeling chocolate and I cut a slit in the back of it and I'm wrapping that around the threaded rod and I smoothed out that seam and I also added a little bit of modeling chocolate to fill out that back leg. And I also created his other leg out of modeling chocolate too and I laid it down on the board and blended those seams in. I wanted the teddy bear to be slightly darker, so I painted him with brown food color gel mixed with a little bit of vodka. I also gave him a light brown snout, two black eyes, and a cute oval shaped nose. And then I'm using my dresden tool to draw a line down from his nose and I'm pressing my tool down into the modeling chocolate to create his open mouth. I think eyes always look cuter when they have a little white reflection dot in them. So in each eye, I'm adding a large and a small white dot. I got a new product that I'm really excited about. It is called Super Shine, made by Poppy Paints. You just brush it on like a regular paint and then it keeps the fondant or modeling chocolate shiny but I did have trouble getting it off my brush so that's my only complaint just use an old brush when you're using this I'm pretty much finished with the teddy bear so let's move on to the stacking of the cakes next I'm adding another nut and washer so as you can see the foot is now touching the metal so if you want you could cover it up with aluminum foil tape but I did not because it's not a part that will get eaten but it is up to you if you want to cover it cover it Next, I'm adding my eight inch masonite board and then another washer and nut. And then I get those all tightened up. I am also covering the rest of the metal parts with aluminum foil tape. The next step is to spoon some melted candy melts onto the board and then quickly lower my eight inch cake down onto the structure. Before I stack my next cake, I am adding four plastic straws as dowels. This will hold the weight of the six inch cake. I already cut all of these straws to the exact height of the cake. My central threaded rod wasn't quite tall enough, so I'm extending the height of it by pushing a straw down around it. I pushed it all the way through the cake until it hit the board and then I trimmed it down just a tad. And then my top tier goes into place. These cakes, by the way, are very cold, which is why I can pick them up like this. Now that my cakes are nice and sturdy, I'm going to cover up that wooden board around the base of the cake with a cute ribbon. To get the ribbon to stick, I am dabbing some royal icing around the bottom edge and then I stuck the ribbon on. The bad part of this was that the icing soaked through the ribbon just a little you could always make a fondant ribbon and then you would not have to worry about that. And I also added a ribbon around the top tier too. 
Now let's move on to the easy part, the decorating of the cake. So I decided to keep this one pretty simple. So I'm decorating it with fondant polka dots and heart sprinkles on the top tier. I like to place these just randomly and sometimes I'll just cover up like if there's a flaw on the cake, I like to cover it up with polka dot. And the eight inch tier is getting different color stripes. These are all randomly placed too. I do not have the time to make these perfectly spaced, um, but I do like to make them straight. So if the stripe is a little bit wonky, you can push a ruler up against it to straighten it out. I'm finishing these cakes off with more heart sprinkles too. Since this cake is for a friend's daughter who is turning two, I decided to make a number two cake topper. This is made out of modeling chocolate and I am rolling it out and I'm placing a number two template on top of it and then I'm tracing around the number two. And then once I lift off that template, you can see the number two traced onto it and then I just use my X-Acto knife to cut it out. I do the same thing on a white sheet of modeling chocolate, but this time I'm tracing a little outside of the number so that it's a little bit bigger, and then I cut that one out too. I'm brushing the white number with melted candy melts, and then I add a flat lollipop stick, and then I stick the purple number two on top of it. And there it is, my number two cake topper. So after looking at my teddy bear, I wasn't really happy with how his leg was so straight. And you could keep it straight if you wanted to, but I wanted to add a little bend in his knee. So I'm just getting my knife out and I'm carving away some of the modeling chocolate away from the back of his knee. And then I added some modeling chocolate to the front of his knee. And once I was happy with the way that it looked, I went back and painted over it. I'm not sure if this looks better than the straight leg. I think either way will look cute. Okay, just a few more details. I'm adding some purple to the insides of his ears and he is also getting a purple bow tie. I was completely finished with this cake, but then decided to change the front leg too. So I took off the leg and inserted a lollipop stick and then I repositioned the leg to look like it was holding the cake up too. And then I attached it to the cake with melted candy melts. I blended in the seams and then I completely repainted it. I actually think this looks so much better. It looks cuter with two legs holding up the cake. My number two topper is going into the cake and then I am also sprinkling some heart sprinkles around the board and I also put some on the number two as well. And lastly, I am gluing a purple ribbon to the base. My cute teddy bear cake is complete. I really like this one. I think it turned out pretty cute and it wasn't too difficult to make but it actually looks pretty impressive. Thank you all for watching and I hope you, that you learned a little bit about how to make a cute teddy bear cake like this. So if you guys have any ideas for me, please let me know down in the comments section and I will see you all next week with another cake decorating video. Bye.